according to Ono John Owe, he said, Biafra ought to have been obliterated from the face of the earth, and every account of it deleted from human memory, but the reverse is the case. Why? Biafra is all that Nigeria is not. Just when you think it is all over, dead and buried, then, like the fabled phoenix, it rises to seize human imagination. What is this Biafra that has captured the attention of the attention and imagination of mankind since 1967 up till date? If we discount the historical narratives of the pre-1967 that had spoken of the Portuguese explorer's quest to establish contact with a black kingdom south of the Sahara, Catherine Acholono, a professor of African history and philosophy and presidential advisor on culture to President Obasanjo, and of course the lead researcher in the work that culminated in the Gram Code of African Adam, stone books and care libraries, reconstructing 450,000 years of Africa's lost civilizations, tried to deconstruct and interpret Biafra as the origin of the world Africa. Achalonu's work holds Biafra to have originated from a god-man called Afra, the ancestor of modern Africa. The word Biafra is further deconstructed as being Igbo, meaning Bi Afra or Obi Afra, derived from the Igbo ethnographic epi epistemology meaning homestead, home or house of Af Afra, hence Biafra or Obi Afra, shortened by the Eastern by the earliest European Portuguese explorers to Biafra, Professor Achalano posits that. Igbo in the organic source of Igbo is the organic source of the Kwa group that populates the Africa's Niger, ben, Niger, Benue, Congo, Nile basins. Portuguese explorers mapped this area, but during the later explorations by British nationals, the eastern and western coast of the Atlantic were named Bight and Bight of Benin and Bight of Biafra. Nigerian crisis from 1966 to 1967 culminated in the secession of Eastern Nigeria or on May 30, 1967 as a country named Biafra. Biafra caught the imagination of the world, but imperial powers were not amused, particularly Britain that created Nigeria as an imperial outpost and neocolonial facility. Britain countered the disintegration Nigeria a personal loss. So the United States, so with the United States, it intervened at onset of crisis to warn the July 29, 1966 Arab secession coupies who had intended to dismantle Nigeria by creating the Republic of Northern Nigeria. To perish the thought which the majority led by Major Martins, Adamu, against the insistence of Major Murtala Muhammad accepted and thereby became the new preservers and custodians of one Nigeria. Colonel Ojuku led Eastern Region angling for Biafra, which rejected the British and American order against secession in 1967, paid dearly for its effrontery. Biafra's existence was contrary to all the philosophical and socio-political foundations upon which nearly all African states were created. That is a neocolonial state. Biafra was created without imperial attachments and every diplomatic string that pulled was pulled by Britain to kill it and it succeeded. Biafrans spoke of a refreshing changes introduced, but the most significant with indelible marks in the memories of Biafrans and the world where the tenacity of the people to exist as a nation as expressed in their determination to withstand excruciating pains of humongous violence, destruction, and privations. It was this determination and tenacity 
that the people and the world registered as the Biafra spirit that has remained undiminished and unquenchable. This determination almost paid off when Richard Nixon, campaigning for the presidency of the United States of America, promised to do something about Biafra's self-determination, but having won the presidency, reneged in difference to geopolitical considerations. After Britain's Prime Minister, Harold Wilson, visited him and dissuaded him from towing the Biafra line. The French under Charles de Gaulle almost recognized Biafra but for his political laws that threw up Pompidou, which disappointment was helplessly etched in the prophetic utterance of President Pompidou that Biafra will reappear again. After the Biafra war, the visitors shared the booty and made every imaginable effort to keep the vanquished down and helplessly pinned to the valley of the feet. The structure and constitutional framework were changed to the disadvantage of the vanquished Biafrans. General Gowon, foisted by Britons as the lead conquistador, was discarded by General Mutala Mohammed, who could rightly be called the second Lugard as he resuscitated the Lugardian feudal, structural, and constitutional framework founded by on indirect rule, which he called the Uniform Local Government System and Land Use Decree, which is the feudal economic foundation upon which indirect rule was founded. General Obasanjo faithfully implemented these policies when he succeeded Muhammad on his assassination in 1967. Ever since, Nigeria has been a troubled house quaking and convulsing from time to time, but now carelessly or ceaselessly troubled with insurgencies, cocktail of crimes and uh, misgovernance. Meanwhile, the turbulent nature of the Nigerian society and incoherence of the state have made Nigerians, especially the southern tribes, to start reconsidering their place and relevance in the house that Lugard built and renovated by Murtala Mohammed by asking if a Biafran or Odudua republics would not be better. The undying spirit of Biafra encapsulated the ideas of freedom and egalitarianism resurrected with a new generation of Nigerians that did not experience the war or experience it as toddlers. That resurrection came with the founding of Movement of the Actualization of Sovereign State of Biafra, Masob, as led by Raf Wazurike. Wazurike's campaign met with serious crackdown by Obasanjo's government, but the group persevered. By the 2000s, new groups, especially the indigenous people of Biafra, led by the British Igbo called Namdekanu, who set up a radio and other media outlets to keep his struggle for the realization of Biafra alive. His activities were visited with violent suppression, but the group persevered. Then recently, the Niger Delta militant Asari Dokubo, who appeared to have silently collaborated with Nambekanu's IPOP, launched what he called the Biafra customary de facto government, but was tersely dismissed by the Buhari government spokesman Lai Mohammed as a joker and attention seeker. I should think that the undying spirit of Biafra, which has now even become the springboard of other separatist groups and tendencies in Nigeria, is founded on the imagination of a land promise, where freedom abound, love binds, and the basic needs of man are attained. All this seem to be these agitators, all this seem to be these agitators to be absent in Nigeria. For nobody appears to be free anymore, especially regarding the four freedoms. Defined by the U.S. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt as freedom of speech, religion, want, and fear. The new generation of Nigerians could not understand why Mrs. Aguahim or Gideon Akaluka could be killed or beheaded on an unsubstantiated allegation of religious offenses, and Akaluka's head spiked on a pole and paraded op openly in Kano City without consequences in a supposed secular state. 
Why can't a giant of a nation maintain basic social infrastructure and services which Biafra was able to provide under severe hostilities? The Nigerian dream that has become illusion illusionary kept the spirit of Biafra alive. Ordinarily, it would have been an effortless job to join Lugard or Namde Azikiwe to converse the beauty of a great country and its promises give its promises given the diverse uh, ethnicities that constitute it, or the enormous wealth and share of beauty of land, stretching from sandy Atlantic coast, Niger Delta mangrove forests, the vast palm plantations of the eastern region, the, the scenic joy one gets on ascending the Bauchi Plateau that stretches from Plateau State to the far north, and several other beautiful reasons to be a Nigerian but wrong foundations have turned the supposed blessings to a cause to the people. And some people are opposing the demolition of this strong foundation to erect a new, strong and good one. These are the reasons for the undying spirit of Biafra. And unless these factors fanning the spiritual embers of Biafra are positively handled, the undying spirits may continue into the disintegration of Nigeria. This is a fact which cannot be wished away. All right, guys, what are your thoughts concerning this particular news story as it were? Do you agree with what um, Chief Ono has speaker has written? Well, drop by at the comment section. Let us know what your thoughts are. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you are yet to subscribe. Kindly hit the bell icon so you can get notification whenever we post new stories. Endeavor to share these new stories with your friends, family, relations, and loved ones so they can get to know what is happening around the world and be informed. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate the support. And I'll see you on the other news. Thank you and bye for now.